to the channel. This is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video, I'm giving you five ways or five crazy things that can actually happen to you while you're doing unclaimed funds. This is not specific to bankruptcy. This could be for state funds or even real estate funds. I've actually had them happen to me before, and so I wanted to just showcase that a little bit, tell you about it, and maybe some things to remedy them from happening. Um, if you're new to my channel, please know that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. Also know that I am now selling cosmetics. It's a little side hustle that I have going on with my mom and my sister. 3queensbeautyllc.com is the website. We have makeup. We have accessories. It's really cute, girly. If you're into that, come on over and check us out. Also check out my other YouTube channel, 3queensbeautyllc.com. So now the first thing uh, on the list that I wanted to mention is the courts can sometimes lose your documents. I've had that happen to me before. They did not lose the entire package that I sent to the court, but they did actually misplace my ID. And when I called and told me, I said, you know what? I actually save copies of everything that I send to you in my CRM and it's right here. And I know that I sent it to you. And they're like, we're sorry, we just misplaced it. So it does happen sometimes and make sure that you are saving all of your documents in a CRM. It's so important in case you need to go back and have things done the right way or the way that you had it at the time that you send it, make sure that you're saving everything. Um, and that's always important to do for all of your cases. So get a good CRM and save your documents. Um, in that case, Again, I think uh, they misplaced it because when you're filing things with the court, they go to so many different people. There's a filing clerk, maybe the mail clerk opens the mail, then there's a the filing clerk, and then you have maybe the financial administrator. And if they're just shuffling things in a file from one desk to another, I mean, things can easily get lost, right? So it does happen on occasion. Not often. That's only happened to me once, but I have had it happen to me. So just be prepared that it could possibly happen to you too. The next thing on this list actually happened to me today. I had another deal. I went to the bank that I usually bank with. It's M&T. That's my business bank. Um, I went there to get some things notarized because I had another deal that I wanted to mail to the court. And I had a new um, notary, basically a new um, bank employee. Uh, she did tell me that she had just gotten her notary uh, stamp and she was new to this. So I gave her the same documents that I always give to everyone when I'm doing unclaimed fund, you know, deals and I'm mailing them to the court. So she looked at one of them, which is essentially my ID. And she said, I can't notarize this. And I'm like, you're just notarizing my signature. Like, that's it. You're not notarizing anything else. And it doesn't, it's not just a copy of my ID. Like there's other language in there. So she's like, no, I can't do that. I just read on the handbook today. And I'm like, you know what? I'm actually a notary in the same state. I can't notarize my own signature, but I do know the rules. I said, well, can you just let me know? Um, is there anybody else here that I can speak with? So I had another, um, basically a bank, a personal representative came out and I have seen her before. And she's like, oh yeah, that's Miss Porter. She comes here a lot with this, you know, similar documents. You can notarize it because again, you're notarizing her signature. So I'm telling you all this to say, it pays to know your documents. Um, the things that you are getting notarized, you need to make sure that you understand them enough to explain it to someone else. Because there could be someone like a new employee that I just mentioned. Maybe the manager is not there on that day. You're going to be you know, wasting time with waiting um, on someone else when you can just explain it to that person and why it's important you know, that it does get notarized. So, And you may have to do that to a clerk. Um, you know, just you may have a clerk that's new and they may not understand your documents and they may call you and be like, what is this? Or how do I do you? They may not know. You may have to train someone is what I'm saying. It doesn't happen often, but it happened to me today. So if it happened to me, it could happen to you. Um, another thing on here, number three, um, clients or bless their hearts, they <laughs> will send you all the signed documents that you ask for when you're doing a deal. And then they will forget to send you their ID. And when I'm sending out letters asking them to give them things back to me signed, it's in bold, you know, font. Please send me a copy of your ID. The courts will not process it if they can't identify both you and I. Like, I have to send my ID too. And so that will happen. People will just, they'll be so excited to do it. And then they forget the ID. And then you have to go back and get them to give you the right information that you need. So just keep that in mind. That's something that you're going to possibly have to deal with on occasion. 
Another thing that's on this crazy list, and I've had this happen to me, like I said, all of these things have happened to me. Number four on this list, you may have a client after they've received their money and they've gotten the deal is basically finished. They may continue to call you. They may continue to call you to um, ask for legal advice. And you know that they can't give it. You can't give legal advice. You're not an attorney. Um, and they may continue to ask you if they have additional funds. I had um, a client of mine that was in the state of Georgia, I think the middle district. And he was like, I keep getting calls from people. Do I have any more money? Can you check? And I said, no, your funds, basically you haven't filed bankruptcy again. You don't have any additional unclaimed funds. I think the courts just have not removed your name from the ledger. And so that's why it's important for you as, um, you know, unclaimed fund locators to make sure you're verifying funds. You don't just want to always go what's in the unclaimed funds locator. Verify it because someone could have already claimed it um, or it could be again for someone else. So you may have that happen on occasion. Just make sure you let people know, hey, I'm not an attorney. I only helped you with your unclaimed funds. If you need to speak to an attorney, please do so because I can't give legal advice. Just make sure you always make that clear from the very beginning. Um, the last thing that's on here is that the post office can lose your check. That happened to me. I had a deal in Missouri, the last deal in Missouri that I mentioned, I got that order in like three, four days without any trouble. And then I just actually got the check because the post office lost it. I don't think the Western District is one that sends a um, electronic fund transfer. I wish they did. I've never got had a check get lost. But I think if you do this long enough, you'll start seeing certain random things kind of pop up because again, you're dealing with the court, you're dealing with the United States post office. They're overworked as it is. Things happen. They did issue the check, but I noticed that it wasn't coming as it should because it's usually 14 days after the court issues an order is when the check should come. So this should have came around, they cut it, I think June or July. And I kept waiting. I was looking in the mail and I'm like, I don't see it. I don't see it. So I called them and I said, hey, um, can you double check on the status of this check? It should have been here. This was the court order. Make sure, again, keep copies of everything and you have like things on a tickler system. So, you know, 14 days after the order, let me go ahead and check to see if the money is here or let me call the court and find out where it is. So in this case, I had to call the court and say, hey, no money. <laughs> where is it? Did you send it to my client? I said, can you verify what address you have for me? And they gave me my P.O. box. I said, yeah, that's the right address. I said, this is strange. I've never had this happen before. So um, they had to do some research to make sure no one cashed it. No one did. And I, what I believe happened was um, I think the post office worker may have placed my check. It could have gotten stuck on someone else's mail. And maybe they just put it in the wrong box. So I'm 334 and they probably put in 332 or 335 and someone didn't check their box or they checked it and they threw it away because it wasn't theirs. If you get mail, I don't know why people do that. I always do that. If I get someone else's mail, I will, you know, return to sender or if I it's in my PO box, I'll just give it to the post worker. You don't know what people are waiting on, but that's neither here nor there. So that's basically what happened. Um, they had to reissue the check. So if that ever happens to you, make sure you are following up to make sure about when you're supposed to get your check. If you don't see it coming anytime soon, it could be an issue with your post um, box or your post, your, basically your, um, the postal workers. Or maybe you had the wrong address and you put the wrong address um, in the court. So you want to verify with the clerk, call them back, verify, hey, what address did I put on there? Or what address do you have for me? And then you can maybe take it up with your postal worker. Um, but at the end of the day, if they've already issued a check and it was not cashed by anyone, they will just reissue another one. So this is basically what happened to me. And that's a copy of this check. So these are different crazy nuances that have come up in my time doing this. Um, it may happen to you. Other things may happen to you. It's kind of random. It's not often, um, but again, there's you're dealing with the general public and this is just these are things that pop up. So I hope that this gives you a little bit more insight on some things that you can expect that are crazy. Um, they all kind of work themselves out at the end of the day. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I hope that uh, I'll see you again soon. And again, if you're interested in makeup and cosmetics, please check out 3queensbeautyllc.com. Thanks for watching.